Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Charlene from StampinWithCharlene.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this beautiful double point fold card using the items from the Poinsettia Place Suite from the brand new Stampin' Up! mini catalog. It just launched on Tuesday of this week. Yes, I know it's only August and this is a Christmas card, but there is no time like the present to start working on your cards for the holidays. While you're watching TV at night, when you have free time, Start working on the different elements of the card and then before you know it, you'll be finished. And when the holidays roll around, you'll have so much free time on your hands. It's such a great, great, great time to use those lazy summer nights to get started and you can take your time. You won't have to rush and feel like you just threw something together. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to create this. You are going to absolutely love it. It looks like it's difficult, but it really, really is easy. So let's watch all the different steps. Take two pieces of designer series paper measuring four inches across by three inches down. For my card today, I am using a design from the Forever Greenery designer series paper, which is in the annual catalog. You can use whatever designer series paper you want. Just make sure that you pay attention to the direction of the pattern of the paper when you create this card. So two pieces of designer series paper cut by four inches across and three inches down. Take your paper trimmer and nest the dark blade at the very top because we're gonna use the scoring blade, which is the lighter color blade. Take your designer series paper and along the three inch side, make a score line at the one inch mark and do that on both pieces of designer series paper, making sure that you pay attention to the direction of the pattern. On this piece, I made the score line at the top. On this piece, I'm going to make the score line on the bottom. So I'm gonna flip it this way and make the score line at the one inch mark along the bottom. So if you'll notice, this one is going to fold up, this one will fold down, and both pieces of designer series paper have the pattern going in the same direction. This is a project where you really wanna use your bone folder because you wanna make sure that you really press down on the score lines and make them nice and flat. And now to make the point, what you wanna do is flip over your pieces of designer series paper. And for this part, you can turn them both in the same direction. And what you wanna do is take, this is the part that you scored. You wanna take this point and fold it into the middle and use that bone, bone folder to get a really, really nice flat crease and do that on both sides. So you have a nice point here and then it folds up like that. So this is what you're going to have on both pieces. So take this corner and fold it in and you're working on the opposite side. So this is the side that you're going to see on your card and fold that in like that and do a nice firm fold. So you will end up with this. For today's double point fold card, I'm using the new stamp and seal from the annual catalog. And to use this, you just want to hold it straight up like that and then to dislodge you just can tick it or you can just lift it straight up and it breaks off the adhesive and just make sure you press that down nice and firmly and I'm gonna do that on each one of these little triangle pieces fold them in press it down nice and firmly It's a little bit stronger of an adhesive than the multi-purpose glue. And on today's card, you're gonna want a little bit stronger adhesive. So I suggest the stamp and seal, or you could also use tear and tape adhesive. For the base of the card, cut a piece of garden green cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half, 
and then cut a piece of very vanilla card stock four inches by five and a quarter. Set aside the base of the card. First, we're going to work on the inside piece of the card, which is the very vanilla. Take your two pieces of designer series paper and make sure that the patterns are going in the correct direction. You wanna make sure that the bottom score piece is going down and the point is going down on the top piece. Apply your adhesive to that and then apply it to the back of your very vanilla piece like this. And you can use your bone folder to make sure that you break the bonds of the adhesive so that it stays down nice and secure. And you can also use your bone folder again to give it another nice crease on top. And then we'll repeat the same thing for the bottom piece. Add your adhesive, adhere it to the bottom. Use your bone folder to make it nice and crisp. And there you have the beginning of the double point fold. Now we're gonna attach our double point fold piece to our base piece. And we'll just apply our adhesive again to the back and center it on our piece of garden green cardstock. And the good thing about this is you're only using one quarter of a piece of eight and a half by 11 cards, cardstock. So you can actually get four cards from one piece of cardstock. So now let's work on the top part. Now we're moving on to what is my favorite part of the card, which is this piece here. This is a piece of copper foil from the annual catalog. It's found in the back where we have our uh, it's right after the designer series paper and it is absolutely gorgeous. So let me show you how I made this piece right here. This is a piece of the copper foil and I am using the stitched nested framelits dies. There are nine dies in this set, which is a great, great, great value. There are so many different things you can do with this. So this is the largest stitched nested framelit. And I'm gonna put this on here and run this through my die cut machine. For this to the card, I wanna point out some fabulous features and benefits of the stitched nested framelit dies. I want you to look at the edging on here, how it has the little stitching detail and then it has the embossed lines on either side of it. It looks magnificent. But after you cut this out, you are left with this as the negative. And what I did was I trimmed off the excess and I made this beautiful frame. So if you look here, I just took my scissors and after I cut it out, then I had this piece here. So I just trimmed off the excess and you can use those as scraps. Do not throw away any of your excess paper. You can always use them as scraps. And then I'm left with this, which I will save and use on another project. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So you're actually getting from one die, you're getting three different pieces. You can use this as a frame too. Three different pieces from just one die from one set. You could do that with any of these. It's a great, great, great value. So now that we have cut out our copper gold foil sheet, you just wanna make sure that when you put your adhesive, you put it at the very, very top so that it doesn't come down below this point because you wanna make sure that you're able to open the card. So I just put my adhesive there and I'm gonna center this right there in the middle and make sure that I really press it down hard so that it sticks nice and strong. And now we will move on to another fun part, which is making the poinsettias for the card. Before we make the poinsettias, I wanna point something, a few different things out, the features and benefits of the poinsettia dies. You will notice that each flower has two separate dies. There is 
this one, which is a typical framelit die that you've seen before. And what this does is, if you use the stamp from the Poinsettia Petals stamp set, this die here cuts out the flower just like our regular dies would do. You just stamp the flower and then cut it out. What this piece does, this embosses the flower. So look closely at the flowers on this card and you will see I didn't stamp them at all. I cut them out and embossed them at the same time. So that is what the poinsettia petals dies can do for you. So this is also, it's like getting a double set of dies in one because not only does it do that for three of the flowers, there are additional dies. I only took out the ones that I'm using on today's card. It also does that with the two leaves. It cuts out the leaf and then it also embosses it. So you can either cut it out after you stamp it or you can stamp it and emboss it, cut it out at the same time, or just cut it out embossed, like I did. Now, another thing I wanna show you is, each one of these nests inside, each embossing die piece nests inside the cut die. So what I did was I took a permanent marker and marked the tip and then I took a label and I, I punched out a little piece of a sticky label and put it on the embossing piece, color coded them so that I could quickly know which way to place the embossing die inside of the cut die. It just makes it a lot easier and I did that on the leaves too. It may, it's just a time saver for you. So that's an extra little tip. So I use very vanilla cardstock and I cut out one of each of the three sizes and you just assemble the flower by putting some adhesive in the center of the largest flower and then you just build on top of each other. So just make sure that you turn your leaves to give your flower dimension. This is the third and then the tiny one goes on the very, very top. I cut out a bunch of different sizes of the leaves in garden green and then I, I threw in an old olive because it's also a coordinating color with the Forever Greenery Designer Series paper that I used on my card. And then I threw in some real red for the berries just to make the card pop. So after you assemble your flower and cut out your leaves and your berries, then you just wanna go ahead and Put your flower wherever you would like. I put mine in the top left corner, but now here is a trick for you uh, that I need to let you know, that when you put your leaves on, make sure that you don't extend beyond your card base because you want it to be able to fit in your envelope. So I'm gonna put this, I'll put this leaf here like that. I love all of our coordinating colors. It's another one of my favorite, favorite parts of Stampin' Up! is that everything coordinates. Uh, put that one there like that. And then maybe I will add another one down here. There is no right or wrong way. The only rule I'm gonna give you on this is to just make sure, like I said, that it does not extend beyond the card base so that it fits in your envelope. And let's put one there like that. And then we will add our berries. Let's see, put one in, in there. And we'll twist it around to make sure it doesn't break my rule. And then we'll put another one right there like that. See how the real red just really makes it pop? So now let's work on the center of the flower. For the center of the flower, I am using the gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous beaded pearls from the new mini catalog. They are so fabulous. I want to make them into a pair of earrings. I think they are stunning. 
So to adhere this to the center of the flower, I am going to use two mini glue dots. It's not a very heavy embellishment, but you do wanna make sure that you adhere it pretty tightly. And I'm gonna put that in the center. Look at how absolutely gorgeous. For my sentiment, I stamped, thank you for making this a wonderful season. This is included in the Poinsettia Petals stamp set. And I think this is a fabulous sentiment for the week between Christmas and New Year. After you've celebrated Christmas, you're waiting for the new year, it's a great thank you card to give to your hostess, to give to someone who was so nice and kind enough to give you a gift. You could even send this as a New Year's card. It is absolutely the most perfect sentiment. And then I just used um, the smaller stitched nested framelits dies to cut out a background and then to cut out the sentiment. It worked perfectly. So please visit stampinwithcharlene.com for more info about this card. And I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I love it. I love, love, love making cards for you. But if nobody sees the cards, it's not fun anymore. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the little bell icon so you can get an email alert whenever I post a new project. That way you can share in the creativity with me. I listed all the supplies that I used below in the description. Um, so if you subscribe to this channel, you can also follow me on Facebook and you can subscribe to get an email alert whenever I post, post a new blog post. I know it sounds like a lot, but I would hate to think that you're missing out on something that's really fun or a new product. I enjoy it so much and it just breaks my heart to think that people aren't seeing different creations and different ways to use their creativity. I hope I was able to inspire you today with this card. Uh, I would love to see the things that you make with your Stampin' Up! products. So you can always send me an email of pictures of things that you make. I would love to see them. Send the email to Charlene at stampinwithcharlene.com or you can post a photo to my Facebook page. You can find the links to everything at my blog, stampinwithcharlene.com. Please share, let's build this community so we can share our creativity together. We can learn from each other and grow and have a great time stamping together. Have a great time and have fun using all your Stampin' Up! products.